first oh, question, you. okay, is yes. um, why did you start being a photographer? Um, well, I uh, saw the Mark Wilson broadcast and uh and they mentioned a few books that it, uh and i thought well I, i'm gonna get go i'm gonna take this one step further by bringing down all the books that really inspired me to be a photographer and one of them is this book uh, it's called it's called reno by R robert duanu okay and hold it a little uh, bit higher up hold it closer to the lens Ooh. come in a bit more reno yeah cool by uh Robert Duanu, okay. the uh, French photographer, and uh, it's a it's a great book because it um, it's like his, his his life is an industrial photographer for Renault. It was his first sort of job, and uh, the beautiful thing about it, it's quite a simple book, really. It's got pictures of people at work uh, on the uh, on the factory floor, and um, but the great thing about it is it's really an autobiography. So the so uh, Robert talks about his his career his career how he got started, and I, I'm because it's uh, I think it's translated really well from the French, and uh, it has a sort of poetic quality to it. It might may just be Robert's writing, I suppose, um, but it really made me think about. Uh, it seemed like a great a great life, and he, then he talks about getting sacked from that job because uh, <laughs> he was uh, he spent too much time. Um, he, 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 got, he, was, he, was, he was late too many times because he was uh, developing colour printing at, at home. And, he kept, and because he had to uh, clock in, um, I think uh, I've done a few jobs where you have to clock in when you start and when you finish. And uh, because he smudged his, uh, his card that he clocked in on, uh, they, they ended up giving him the boot. And, um, and then he started his career properly, you know, as a, you know, uh, photojournalist you know um, documentary photographer and um and that was, was that like... the only car company that he used to do stuff for because i had a feeling that um i saw some robert there no uh, peugeot stuff oh quite that... possibly quite possibly or was, it, or was it citroen it was one of the two and um i think it was around the time of with renault uh the french were um pushing that the French people should drive to go on holiday in France. I think that's what how Doisneau started to get a lot of advertising work. Oh, yeah. Does that sound familiar? I'm sure. I mean, I'm not sure. The rest, you know, the, you know, books are quite often. I mean, I'm a big, big lover of photog books generally, but especially photography books. And this was quite a simple book. And um, and it, but the, the, the beauty of it is in its simplicity. Um, and so that kind of that, oh, oops, you've you've gone. Nope, we've got a slight technical error. <laughs> yeah, you I, knocked I, the you, you've knocked the cameraman over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was he was he was obviously uh, he was, was obviously not a fan of that uh, that photography book. Um, uh, and then I did uh, I did a degree in photography. I did um, I was basically I failed at GCSE maths. And I know that sounds like it's going to be a really, really long, long answer to your question, but um, I'd ended up doing a GCSE in photography, and um, instead, and that kind of gave me. A, a, I was actually really good at that, and uh, as opposed to maths, which I wasn't, and uh, and I ended up doing um, a BTEC in photography, and then I did a degree in it in uh, Nottingham Trent, which was uh, tw twenty years ago, <laughs> uh, and. Uh, and yeah, since then I've just been I've been working as I started in London as a uh, photographer's assistant, uh, and uh, I've been working in the industry as a, as a photographer and a picture editor since then, really. Um, and uh, other other books that really inspired <clears> me. <throat> I should have let, I should have brought the 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 the, uh, the um, chest uh, sorry the um shelving unit a bit closer but another book that really inspired me is uh the shipping forecast by mark power okay hold on one uh, second if you could tom if you can hold that up nice and steady to the camera and uh it's a bit close a little bit out back to you back to you back to you 
that's it just to give people a bit of the if you wouldn't mind opening a few pages just have a quick flick through and just yeah, give them a, a little bit of a, a flavor of it i love mark power he's a fantastic photographer now when did you get that book was that when, that couldn't have been when you were at college uh not shortly afterwards it was 1999 yeah. because yeah. he signed it because he oh, signed fantastic. it for me um so I was at this uh, after I did uh, Nottingham Trent. I was a bit of a, you know, as is want in courses twenty years ago. You weren't really prepared for the world of, uh, you know, making a living. That 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 was a bit of an issue for me. Um, but I ended up doing this really good course through uh, a photography centre in Leicester called uh, Picture House Centre for Photography, which was run by Roger Bradley, and it was a co- it was a one year sort of part time course to help sort of uh, to um into the into the the industry um and mark power gave a talk and uh bought his book and um and it was this 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 so it's quite an old project you know it's over 20 years old this project and the beautiful thing about it it's called the shipping forecast and again it's a, such a simple concept but he's gone to all the places uh named in the you know the the shipping forecast like white Fine, he's gone to the club mass because clearly, <laughs> the ship, you know, ships in the in the ocean in the sea. So, <laughs> um, so he's gone to the closest sort of like um, uh, areas, and um, uh, and then done pictures there, and uh, the captions are things like Dogger, Sunday, thirtieth of June, nineteen ninety six. West or southwest four or five, occasionally six later, occasional rain, most mainly good. It was right, okay. Brilliant. I mean, it's yeah. one, of, one of the best books uh, I think I've ever seen because it's such a simple concept and the pictures are so, so good. Um, and uh, your, so, um, just, to, just to cut in, Tom, your uh, Wi Fi is a little bit on the blink. Oh. It's a bit. Uh, is there any chance that we could uh, get it? Could you oh. reboot it? Would you be able to reboot it or, or um, disconnect it and connect it again or something like that just for a minute? Um, I can't really because my, my computer is backing up. Sorry? My computer is uh, backing up. It's connected to the wires. Um, I think that might be the problem. Oh. Um, Are you able to go on 4G? Uh, yeah, 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 can do. Yeah, let's do that. I think that might help. So just if you're joining, thanks ever so much for watching. If you've got any questions for Tom Broadbent, please do put them in the comments underneath. Loads to ask him. He's had quite a large career and uh, he's covered many, many different uh events and hopefully we're going to talk a, a bit more of that and then talk into his um about his uh photo book um yeah have we, have we still got you yeah i'm here hello okay so the um let's go into you know because I, I i love those inspirational photo books um yeah. and <clears throat> that normally puts you on some sort of direction so it's in, interesting the kind of people that you were into being mm. Robert Dwarz, no, and especially he's more industrial photography. And um, yeah. in fact, he's uh, going on to Mark Power. And Mark Power also, is, I wouldn't call him totally industrial, but his uh, architectural photography and so on, yeah, it, you know, is, is of, that kind of, of that kind of world. Um, was that something that you wanted to p- pursue? For, you oh. know, or had, had, had you kind of gone on a few left and right tangents? No, uh, well, I suppose so, but I guess it was just that uh, both photographers had something uh, of interest to say or to tell a story, and um, they espre- expressed it, especially, I mean, Robert Duane's photographs are essentially, he was just hired to do a job. He was a contract photographer, but he did it in a really poetic way, and it's a similar with Mark Power. You know, it's similar with... God, this again. Um, <laughs> definitely should have done something about that. Um, you know, another book is this. It's this book. Uh, okay. It's Open Skies by Don McCullen. Okay. 
So now, this was uh, this interestingly is uh, a book that um, <clears throat> I grew up near Don McCullin, and uh, he was from yes, he lived in Somerset. No, no, before Somerset, he lived in uh, near Bishop Stortford in Hertfordshire. And oh, um, right. when he, when he came home from his conflicts and and went and was starting to do his um, uh, skies, basically he was doing a lot of skies with a dark, dark darkness. But that it all was. began when he was in Essex, oh. and then subsequently Somerset, which is uh, I assume most of that book, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and I, I love that kind of. He, the way he sort of he, for him to sort of deal with his um, um, his life and and how he'd had you know obviously PTSD and all those kind of things. Oh, of course, he'd, yeah. he'd gone into that shaping landscapes. What had you got from it? Well, I could just see the sort of the. I mean, this is ridiculous. <laughs> this is almost ridiculous. I pulled out three photography books, all both, all black and white. All black and white, and you're thinking, <laughs> sorry, how does this connect to? Uh, I guess I'm, I'm into photographers who uh, 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 need to have a story. A story is sort of their opinion through pictures. Tom, and, can, we, um, can we just pause it? And Tom, the... Can we just pause a second because we can't quite mm. hear you? Is there any chance that you can, it might be worth trying to flick your Wi Fi back on again? Uh, okay. Um... The, uh, the, 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 uh, the actual sound is, and the, uh, you're very pixelated. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. Uh... All right. Hold on a sec. Let's stick some more questions below. Thanks ever so much, Alex. That's a great question. I'll bring that up in a minute for him. Um, and Daryl, that's great. Um, you've That's interesting about the X-T1. Um, and, uh, yeah, I hope you're getting on with that. If you've got any problems, you can always contact us directly. I'm sure that you can um, get a lot of um, information out of us and our, our support is is massively helpful so if you do get stuck please do also tweet me um i'm a fuji user as well x pro 2 i use and that is easily one of the best cameras i've ever used so if you've got any questions as well go on twitter and find me i don't mind ask, answering anything if you're stuck um you might not need any help you might be more pro than me so um that you know that that uh is is uh, a good way always to start the conversation on Twitter and, and become a little bit more part of this community a little bit further. Okay, so it needs to be landscape, Tom. Ah, right, okay, so Tom is off at the moment. We'll just let him get himself sorted out. So, um... I could answer this question next, actually, Alex, for you. Any advice for budding photographers? Um, are, are degrees super important or portfolios? Asking for my sister. Right. So, um, <clears throat> okay. My experience was I hadn't done hadn't done a degree. Um, in fact, I didn't learn photography via further education or um, higher education. Uh, but that was just my experience, um, and I found it didn't hinder me. Came out the other side. I got myself uh, lots of work experience. I worked in lots of places where I was able to get uh, photography assignments. You know, even if they were free. Uh, you know, with me being eighteen, um, and from there we, I was able to. That's much better, Tom. I'll come back in a second. So it, it, I found that that was very good for me. However, I've got colleagues and friends who have done degrees, and I will bring Tom into this now. Um, so, Tom. Yes. Okay, that's a lot better. So if you could answer this question for Alex, he asked, have you got any advice for budding photography? Uh, say again, what? Alex Hello? asks, have you got any advice for budding photographers? Are degrees super import important or portfolios? What's your experience, Tom? Uh, well, the, the thing is, is that um, the, what 
what a degree gives you is three years to think, think, think about. I mean, I think if I, if knowing what I know now, you know, if I was talking to the young Tom Robin, I'd be, I, th- I think that the, the, the degree is, I'd like to say, I'd like to tell you that it's easy. It's a, what, yeah, don't do a degree because um, you save the money and uh, read a bunch of photography books and um, and invest the money in your, you know, portfolios and equipment. Um, but then on the flip side, you've got, um, you, you want to have those three years to really sort of grow up in a way, grow up as a, as a person. You getting this? Yeah. Okay. Um, cause a degree uh, isn't really necessarily just about, uh, say you, you go, you go to a bunch of lectures, I guess lecture comes along, says, you know, this is, I'm a photographer, blah, blah, blah. You know, you learn how to take a picture of that and this and that. But I wouldn't say it's as easy as saying, I mean, I feel like, <laughs> I mean, if you'd asked me 10 years ago, I'd say it's probably not worth it, but. 20 years later, I think it's it's absolutely key. I mean, all the friends I've got are, are made through going to university. Um, and all the connect, you know, I've got, uh, I've made so many great connections and learned so much about myself doing a degree. So, yeah, I mean, I think they're, they're, they are important. They have a place, you know. Um, and every photographer you ask, um, how did they become a photographer? The, their story will be completely different. There isn't like one fixed path, you know, to making becoming a you know a, a published photographer, a, a commercial photographer, you know, whatever you end up doing. There's no kind of there's not there's not one size fits all. So it's whatever you th- whatever you feel at the time, you know, you've got to go with it. No regrets, you know. That's pretty um, much um, that's pretty much what. I said about a minute or two ago, that's, that's perfect. Um, because I, in fact, you, you had gone through uni. Yeah. Uh, and I said that my, um, experience with my experience was the opposite to yours, Tom. So I didn't go to uni and I didn't yeah. learn that way. However, it didn't hinder me. However, my colleagues have been to uni and it was a good move because of you learning and being social and uh, doing all those kind of things. So, um, I hope that answers your question, Alex. Um, it's sort of a, a bit of a suck it and see thing. I think, actually, let's add to this. I don't think that uh, employers necessarily discriminate if you've been to uni or not in our oh, world. No, no. It's, I think there's, I mean, uh, there's no barrier to entry, really, but it no, will help one individual one way and one individual in a, another way. It, Hope it that will, makes sense. And, and there are some, you know, I've... I've I've guest lectured at quite a few different courses, uh, you know, and there's some absolutely fantastic degrees out there. I mean, uh, I've done stuff at University of Falmouth. Uh, I've been at Coventry. I've been at uh, Cheltenham, University of Cheltenham. Grant Scott does that course. Um, you know, there's some, and Nottingham Trent, you know, my old, my old, I did a talk there. I went back there in, in 2016 and it was really great. You know, it They've really, you know, all the all the uh, degree, um, all the universities have really stepped up their game. And, you know, if you go to, a, you do a degree now, you can expect to, I mean, a lot, of, I just judged the uh, University of Falmouth, they have a press as like an editorial photography uh, degree. And I just judged their, uh, their portrait awards. Um, and the quality was stunning, you know, like, these guys are ready to go and be professionals, you know. Um, I mean, I'm sure I, I'm sure I was at the time, but that maturity and the the way that they they shoot is pretty pretty amazing. So yeah, there you go, there you go. For and against, you know, it's good to do with a person really more than anything. Okay, so um, I think that what would be a good thing is to Uh, because there's some obvious things that I want to go into. But um, I'd like to find out from you about your bread and butter work. 
okay. and how you have to go and earn some money to yes. keep a roof over your head. And oh, yeah, uh, nice. that's not that's about good. always, sh- you know, uh, shooting projects and uh, all the things that you love taking pictures of aren't always going to earn you the money. So, Tom, what's your experience of trying to earn money with uh, photography? Uh, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. But I do a lot of int- I, do, I do work on a lot of projects. Um, I've got some examples here. This is I'm also as a what's going on here. Um, here's one. Okay, just hold that nice and still. Okay, icons of women's style. Okay. Yep. Uh, and I did all the picture research for this pro- for this book. So. Um, Uh, it was all different types of. Uh, it was all the icons, icons that wore the clothes, and, and also, um, so there's a lot of Magnum photography in there. Um, uh, a lot of stuff from Corpus. Sorry to see you go, mate. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Marilyn Monroe, that sort of stuff. Just dip it down slightly, Tom, because there's a bit of reflection on it. Is that better? Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay, that's cool. Uh, so that was a book project I did for Lawrence King. Um, I did, I've done like four books for them on all different f- things. I did one on men's fashion, did one on the history of tattoos. Um, Very done good. Ones, uh, I do a, a, a picture research. I'm a specialist in um, uh, youth culture and... Uh, uh, fashion and uh, subcultures. So, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> fortunately, uh, it's unfortunate. But I've, uh, I've I've built this book stack where this phone is resting on a number of books I've worked on, which possibly wasn't <laughs> most intelligent thing I've ever done. But okay, fine. No, that's okay. That's okay. I think that what we, you know, that's good to get a gist of that. But also, you know, obviously, you're earning some money from curation rather than than taking photographs i think yeah. that um that actually students have got to take this on um, you know into consideration that you know you might be in the photography industry but you might not be take, clicking the shutter to actually earn your living you have to go and uh, hustle a little bit and uh, there are plenty of editing jobs and and uh curation jobs and, and that kind of thing that you could actually work on as well as working on your projects just wanted to ask bring this in in price he says, I am a mature student in Cheltenham with Grant as one of hey, my lecturers. Nice. The Brilliant. most important thing I have found is the business awareness and understanding from the course. That's interesting. That's really good that he's yeah, taking care of, of uh, students. I've seen that a million times where you, um, in fact, we were talking about this the other day on, on Another Life, that um, the, the main issue is that you learn all this creativity, but you don't learn any business sense at all. So you well, come out and you're totally green and you don't know what yeah. the hell's going <laughs> That's so, me. Uh, That's me 20 years ago. No, so uh, this is great. Yeah. This is all really good because, uh, well, you know, Grant's great at that. And it sounds like you're on the right track, mate. Um, that's I hope that uh, – thanks so much for that, Ian. If you are watching, you've got any other questions, please do stick them in the comments underneath. We can uh, keep the conversation going. So now, Tom, uh, I'd like yes. to come into – you know, that, uh, that is how you're earning your, your, your bread and butter, earning your living. You're doing a bit of creation. You're taking pictures. You're keeping a roof yeah. over your head. But however, you are um, uh, driven to shoot yeah. great projects because that keeps the spirit alive. So – um, tell me what your influence is in terms of people shooting projects. So we've obviously been through Robert Dosno and Mark Power, and they are very uh, – they're commercial photographers, really. You know, yeah. they're hired by entities. So how have you um, been influenced to shoot projects? And actually, what kind of projects really catch your eye that you really want to get, get involved in? Or subjects, I mean, not projects. Subjects really catch your eye. Yeah, yeah. Um... Well, I was uh, when I was um, when I finished as a photographer's assistant. When I was working for uh, PYMCA, and they were uh, that's not a branch of the YMCA. It's <laughs> it's called the fo- <laughs> it's. Um, I've got to the book. It was 
It's, it's this. This is their catalogue. Uh, Photographic Youth Music Cultural Archive. It was set up by uh, Steve Lazaridis and Jake Cunningham. Uh, and I was, uh, I was, Steve at the time was a photographer um, and I was his assistant. Uh, and they, it was a photo agency and a photo library. And I was a kind of jack of all trades. So I was like the assistant, I was a photographer quite often for magazines like, well, I'll get this one, which is not in the pile that was got the, the phone on. Um, that was my first magazine cover for Sleaze Nation. Um, so, um, and I was, uh, and, and this was about, uh, this was youth, youth culture and subcultures. I was a picture researcher um, and I uh, really enjoyed that aspect of it, and I ended up being becoming the picture editor on a magazine called Bazaar, uh, which was about uh, I get about sort of um, alternative culture. And um, we used working... to sell a lot of pictures to them. Who who did? When I worked for an agency, we used to cool. sell a lot of pictures into Bazaar Alpha. Oh yeah, what was what yeah. what, what, what agency was it? Uh, Alpha, they were called. It was, oh, yes. uh, it, it was us and I think Barcroft and yeah. uh, uh, phew, I, I'm trying to remember who else. But we, yeah, we used to um, cover lots of events and that kind of thing, and that was very bizarre friendly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it. it was a great, it's a great magazine, best magazine I've ever worked on. You know, as a picture editor, it was brilliant. You know, amazing team. Um, uh, it's just like uh, the magazine which you think was sort of like um, it, it wouldn't have the highest uh, journalistic standards or any. You wouldn't think yeah. it would, but it it did. Yeah, like best yeah. journalists um, and uh, art directors, and it was brilliant, you know. And uh, but but I worked there for seven years, um, and I was exposed to a lot of great photography while I was working there, and particularly as a uh, as somebody who was starting to really push the boundaries of what the magazine was doing, I mean, photographically. So we started um, uh, commissioning a lot of photographers such as uh, Abby Trailer-Smith, uh, Tim Allen, um, Justin Sutcliffe. Uh, we really pushed it a bit on what we could do. And um, I was sent, sent a photographer, Dad uh, Afton House, to uh, Mexico, to shoot um, uh, Santa Muerte for the magazine, um, uh, which is like where uh, the sort of like the underbelly of Mexican society worship uh, a saint who's uh, Saint Death. Um, cheery. No, it was it was good though, really good. And we did some really interesting shoots, and um, and, uh, and and I just sort of I guess I was sort of influenced by the photographers I was working with. And commissioning, um, and I was thinking, you know, this. It the but you know you call. The thing is, is the furry project is, the really the only project that I've, I've developed over this period of time. I've worked on other little shoots, like did a Sabutio club and did a fencing club, and I did sort of small things really, um, before I and I was shooting portraits as well, of course. But I really didn't. This this furry project beca has become a project, but I didn't um, really. I didn't. I'm not. You know, I've done, I've done a Kickstarter and I'm going to publish a book. But when I started the project, I didn't really have this great idea that I was going to do this. You know, it was. I wanted to do. A, the idea was I was selling it to the furries community themselves. That it would be a a great book and an exhibition, you know, but this was sort of pie in the sky, really, uh, ideas, really. And um, it sort of developed, you know, and it just kept doing it and working on it. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, just to give a, an intro to the, the viewers, that Tom has been shooting a project called At Home with the Furries, and uh, which has recently been a Kickstarter crowdfund and mm. uh, was successfully funded. And yes. I, I, I pledged, 
And yeah, you did. Uh, Thank it, you. it looks fantastic and uh, got really interested in that because I think that we're, we're all a little bit, um, I think with countercultures and especially the British are very funny about, um, we've come from that world where we're quite stiff up a lip and, and, and that kind of thing. However, there are all these little countercultures happening in the UK and Britain. Where we're actually very out there. Uh, we just don't like talking about it. And uh, this is a very good uh, example um, of of that. And, and Tom's photography is uh, all colour. Um, yeah. I was going to actually ask you, are you shooting that on, all on film? <laughs> no, no way, mate. <laughs> I went digital. It's all on digital. All it's digital. shot with uh, studio flash, isn't it? They're, a lot, they're quite studio yeah. flashed, which I really it's... love. Yeah. For, oh, thanks. You know, it's it's a mixture of stuff. It's available light. It's studio flash. It's yeah. And it really brings the a, colours out because obviously the the animals, not the the animals, the animal costumes, <laughs> but the furries. Yeah. So as they not to animals, upset Richard. the furries because they I'm are animals. Just, they are. Yeah, I'm <laughs> going to get trolled. Uh, <laughs> the, the, they are like so colourful that actually the way that you've shot them with with quite a bit of flash in some instances is really that really brings all that out i love all all of that it's really cool um if you guys have not seen this yet uh, oh, what um, i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly put the, um you mean something like comments. this mate um, oh i'll give you uh, yes okay i can't quite do straight because you'll get the reflection but that's, uh, that's Edward Fuzzy Paws and Teddy. Uh, one's a poodle, one's a labradoodle. You have to guess which one. Um, and that was shot in 2015 in Richmond. Um, and when, when did you begin this project? Uh, it was... Oh, it was in... It was in 2008... Wow. Uh, I, these, uh, I, I've spent this morning in my loft trying to find the actual magazine issue for Bizarre because I did a shoot for Bizarre magazine uh, where we went down to, um, uh, what do we do? It was, uh, it was an animal theme special um, and Bizarre had briefly done a shoot with the furries to, to, and the furries seem to like it. So I went down to this convention called RBW, uh, called, which stands for Rather Brilliant Weekend. And uh, I went, to, it was a hotel in Bloomsbury. And uh, I did a shoot of a furry convention. And I did pictures of um, just the furries, um, fur suitors, as they're known now, as I know now. Uh, sort of dressed up um, and just did some pictures and asked them about the costumes and the characters and their names. And they kind of really opened up and I thought in sense that they really wanted to talk about that. And it, and um, I thought, you know, there's a great project here. I mean, these pictures were nice, you know, I, you know, we did a nice uh, spread in the magazine, um, just Fox pops really. But um I thought there's a brilliant project here, and I, I just thought that maybe if I um, start photographing them in their own homes, we'll get an aspect, we'll get a little bit of who they are as people, uh, mixed with the the, ca the characters that they represent or uh, are, um, and uh, and that's just how it started. And the the picture, the first picture I ever shot for it, <laughs> he's going to do a plug. <laughs> The first picture I ever shot for it, Richard, is in this book, which came out last year. So we're going to sort of jump around a bit, but I only... <laughs> uh, That's I don't totally know, funny. I don't know the page number either, Richard. No, I do. It's uh, <laughs> there's some great pictures in this book. Oh, it's some great pictures, you know. Um, and... Uh, here it is. I'm just going to, I'm just going to grab a... Uh, hold on, there we go. If you could just hold it a little bit tip down yeah okay gotcha excellent so that's uh smirnoff and uh he's a husky wolf hybrid 
lives in uh, Southgate, North London. Um, and we did a bunch of pictures. I mean, this was my first shoot and um, with them, with him. And uh, did a bunch of setups, playing the guitar, um, just what you like to do at home or maybe what you have <laughs> to do, like chores. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so we did that. And I did, there's something with that piano shot that I kept, I kept coming back to. You know, and I couldn't put my finger on what it was that made it so good. So um, I just had it on my phone, which at the time was a uh, old Nokia, pre iPhone, you know, and um, and I showed it to a few people, uh, picture editors I knew, and they were like, "Oh, this is nice," you know. You're going to keep going with the project? I was like, "Yeah, I think it's good to get like feedback from people uh, who you don't know is always good," um, and. Uh, and so I did. An, I did a few other shoots: um, Alpha Fox and uh, Lupus Lunar Wolf. They're they're on my website. They're the, that's a wolf and a fox playing poker at home. Um, and at the time um, I did that shoot, Lupus um, was chairman of the London Furs Organising Committee. They they are so organised, you know. They have an organising committee, and and he knows a lot of furries. And he said, "Oh, I know a lot of furries." Sir. He'll be up to being in your project. Would you like me to introduce you? And I was like, oh, yeah. So um, so we ended up sort of building the project from there, really. Um, and I started traveling all over the UK um, doing pictures. And we'd, you know, I'd be in touch with the the furries ahead of time. And we'd sort of, uh, they'd maybe send me pictures of their, the inside of their homes. We'd sort of talk about, you know, what they like to do as hobbies or, and when I say hobbies, I mean them as people and also their characters as well, because it became quite obvious that the two were kind of interconnected. Um, not in a kind of serious way, but in a kind of playful, fun way. And the tone of the project always had to remain that. Like it was if the, the like the wolf playing the piano. If my idea for the project was really it was almost like a performance piece so you would it's like you turn up at my house Richard and I would be dressed in a full uh, wolf suit playing a piano and you'd be like and I, my expression would be well you won't see my expression but my response to you would be well what do you want you know this is what I do you know? yeah so um so that's how the project started really um I've probably gone off. I've just got a, uh, I've just got a quick question for you to bring in. Alex is asking, do you think that social media like Instagram has made being a photographer easier or harder? Does it cheapen the profession? Oh, it's amazing! <laughs> it's amazing. Social media is just like um, I, I tell you what about social media. It's uh, uh, Instagram is is becoming so important, um, and it's a tool, just like a camera is a tool. Uh, it's a way of uh, it doesn't cheapen it, far from it. It's it's the opposite of what you think. I couldn't have done this project. I couldn't have done a Kickstarter without social media. I couldn't have built this project without social media. Um, I'm not just talking about uh, necessarily the people who are in the project, but I'm talking about the wider community. So I'm connected with, with furries all over the world who have supported this project and continue to do so. I'm not talking even just about, um, we'll get back to the Instagram thing. I'm not just talking about uh, necessarily <laughs> them buying a copy of the book, but for example, uh, copyright infringements, which go on with my work and I get informed of it by furries or misuse of my work. You know, it's been used in a way that I wouldn't agree with. Um, it's still a copyright infringement, but it's still, it's the sort of next level sort of, you know, misuse of my work. And people t always tell me about it. Tom, do you know about this? And I'm like, no, but thanks for telling me. Now I can sort that out. Um, How do they tell you it? How do they actually tell you this, Tom? Is there, you know, if you've got a wolf ringing you up, no, they just they message me on, on Twitter, you know. Um, um, there's a bit of a copyright infringement kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, or is it wolves, or is the there a giraffe there. and they're a bit different? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's they yeah, well I'll take your point. Um but uh it's usually like uh 
uh, they'll tell a friend of theirs who knows me and they'll let me know or they'll just message me directly. Do you know about this? Um, or copy me into a, uh, and it's great. Oh, I love it so much. Um, so I had an infringement last year um, by this, uh, by a, a music company, which will re- shall remain nameless. Um, and a furry I know spotted it on their Facebook uh, pay, uh, feed. It sort of came through. They're into music. Uh, and it came through and he said, do you know about this? I was like, no, but um, thanks for telling me. Um, so the, the social media is so important. As for Instagram, I use it a lot and it's become a sort of diary for me. I mean, it, it was so important with the... Uh, it, I, I, I couldn't say that... I think these all, thi- all things are... It, anything in photography, if you want to do anything like uh, publish a book or do an exhibition or put a new project together, uh, all these things start incrementally and sort of build. Uh, and I found that when I was doing my Kickstarter, which I'm sure we'll talk about in more detail, I found that I was using three social channels to uh, broadcast what was my interest. I mean, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, and Instagram was quite interesting because it allows you to put up footage and little clips and basically I'd, I'd done all these things like when I was putting the project together I'd go to a convention or a firm meet and I'd shoot you know material uh, not thinking I'd do anything with it but when it came to doing a, a crowdfunder where I needed a lot of uh, sort of background stuff as well as the pictures that are in the book it became invaluable and putting the stuff on Instagram was great I mean it's hard to know what sort of impact it had, but it made me feel better, like I was actually doing something. Um, but so, have, but, have you, uh, Tom? Have you found that you were um, limiting what you were putting up <coughs> on Instagram? Um, were you putting, were you putting up the actual work, or were you putting up more behind the scenes kind of images on Instagram? to lead people into your, let's say, your website, your projects, where you would update people or, your, or in this case, the Kickstarter campaign? Uh, I always, I've done both. Um, I've put up stuff from the, the actual project. Um, I, sort of to, I started to veer away from that when I did the Kickstarter because I, I had a feeling that I, pe- I think people wanted to know the sort of background, the information, and I, and I found that really interesting. And also... I mean, this whole project allows a lot of punnery. You know, it allows you to be, you know, quite, quite uh, creative in your, uh, um, in your sort of like uh, approach. And uh, I was thinking, you know, I was thinking, how can I make this still funny? You know, how can I make a joke out of this? How can I make it light? Um, so I was pulling as much stuff, and you know, we're we're nearly at the line. We're ne- we've nearly got to the finishing line, and it's some furries running, you know, or. It was it was a time lapse or something, and um, it was I found it very very good to do that. Um, but I have put pictures from the from the project on Instagram. But you, I think I think there is a fear that photographers really fear putting their work up, or they think that people are going to lift it and misuse it and use it in a ne- negative way, and. That happens, of course, you know, now and again, but not to the degree that people are saying. I mean, there was one thing a photographer did say to me. Um, uh, he said, uh, you know, surely it's good enough that people are taking an actual interest in your work. I mean, I'm not talking about lifting it and, and all that, but I'm talking about sharing it. There's a difference between I'm quite clear about uh, people sharing my work don't have an issue with. It's about when you use it commercially, I've got a problem with that. But sharing it is fine. You know, that's what social media is built on. Um, and I think people just have to, like, just stop being so scared of it. It's Honestly, it depends where you are in your career, I think, as well. And whether you, how much you, it's just, it's sort of, you have to kind of let go, let go of it. So I, I hope think that answers a, your question. An, I think there is a, an element of, <clears throat> fear mongering and fear and all the rest of it. I think that yeah, if it's done it, 
if it's done in the right way and with the right strategy, I'm going to, especially with um, the answer to Alex, um, is that the you've got to understand that um, Tom and I, and I don't know how old you are, Alex, but uh, Tom and I are um, of an age where we actually had physical portfolios to take around to people. Yeah, yeah. So if you can imagine 15-year-old me, right, if you stuck 15-year-old me here today, I yeah. would be, I'd be like, oh, my God, this is just the most epic because, you know, carrying a portfolio, going on the train into town with a portfolio and going to see one person, one, yeah, and then go really quickly, flick through it, and go, uh, okay, that's okay, and be polite, it's okay, and then just sort of give it back to you, and then you trudge to the next door. Then 15-year-old me, I would have been all over Instagram, I would have been just hammering the hell out of it, um, showing everything, literally everything, because when you knew, you have to show everybody what you're about. When you're a bit older, and I'm being polite here, Tom, that uh, uh, that you can pick and choose because you've come a long way <clears throat> and you can actually use a behind-the-scenes strategy maybe on Instagram where you show all the making of, the working of it, but not actually the work itself. And you tease up to a point and then you can maybe do a crowdfund or maybe just do a launch for the entire set or an exhibition. There's loads of different ways around it. So... Um, I think it's made being a photographer tons, tons, tons easier. Anybody that says it is a hindrance or wrong, I will have a proper stand-up argument with about it because I, I just think it's amazing. It's free. You know, it's amazing. And yeah, uh, Tom's to, so right. You just have to – it's like anything. You've got to work really hard. I mean, you've got to work really hard uh, to to sort of break through the noise. Um because there is obviously more material out there, but <clears throat> people who are successful, really successful, are there's no secret to why they're successful. They're just working bloody hard, they're really hard. You know, um, you know. If you've got any uh, questions on here, and you'd like to ask Tom anything, please do in the comments underneath. That's really helpful. We can uh, chip away at any Q and A's, questions, or anything that you've got. It's always quite handy as well when you've got students because they throw out all the new, newer, you know, newer questions and mm. uh, the more the most obvious things to a pros. Actually, you know, they're, they're, they're often the most important. So if you've got anything, just just give us a shout underneath. So, Tom, um, can, can I take us into uh, where you were with the, you know, you're shooting the project, getting it going, and, and obviously yeah. it's over a period of years. At what yeah. point did you suddenly think um, – Right now is the time I need to do a crowdfund, and I'd love to have a book of it. At yeah. what point? What made your decision for you? Well, it was—I wouldn't say it was like one big thing. The the, the the thing that kind of made me think, "Christ, let's get serious," was this book. That book. I mean, there's a realization there that what. What are you doing? I mean, there's some books, there's pictures in here by like Bill Brandt, you know, Robert Duanu, yeah. um, Robert Kappa, um, Elliot Erwitt, um, Eve Arnold, Joseph Kadelka, uh, Mark Wilson's friend. Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nick Knight, you know, and go on and on and on. You know, it's like, you know, just amazing, you know. Um, and you thought Tom, Tom Broadbent. As well needs to be amongst those guys obviously that well makes sense. it wasn't you know it wasn't just that i mean we get like we got like i mean so the book so the store the the project i've uh it's been in some really great publications over the years you know like the sunday times magazine uh you know so this was 2013 and they did uh spectrum and that was three that pages. Is, that, that was very good, actually. That was three pages. And they did a really nice job. And then 
so it's been in a few places like Wired as well. Um, but uh, it was sort of like so doing a book. It was always an idea to do a book, and I pitched it to a lot of book publishers. So it'd been pitched to people like uh, Tashin, uh, Thames mm-hmm. and Hudson, uh, Lawrence King, um, uh, Dowie Lewis. And the feedback I got, if you got feedback at all, was they loved the work, but they really didn't think there was a market for it. Um, and But also the way that I was approaching publishers was, here's the work, go on, make it amazing, you know. And I, I did a, a bookmaking course with Aaron Morell of Morell Books at Fur mm-hmm. Fusion in 2016. And his... Uh, opinion was look i don't want you to bring the work to me and me to make it amazing uh i'll do that anyway but i want you to bring your vision to it as a you're the photographer you're the or the visual artist what's your you know what how do you want it to be seen you know what story are you telling and i thought that's a really good point you know and i thought to myself well that's true i, I don't really you know this project is so um important to me and the subject matter is so sensitive in a way in a way that i've treated the furries over the years um basically i won't let the work be used in a way that i'm not happy with i've said no to a lot of opportunities (laughs) shall we say um i've turned down a lot of publications you know say not interested you know like tabloids and TV production companies and um, all sorts of people. And um, I only want the work to be seen in the best places. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm going to say, I'm not going to just sort of give it to somebody. I'm going to come up with a vision myself. So I worked on this book concept. Uh, and then when 1001 Photographs came out, it felt like it was time to you know, go ahead with it. And so I spent, so from September last year, I put together a crowdfunding campaign and we launched on March. In March, we shot some video for it, for the crowdfunding, for the actual video, which was really important, and um, put it together, you know. Um, so it's, I'd say the book was the catalyst, but I'd already, was it always in the, already in the process? So by the time we did the crowdfunding, the book is 90% designed already. Um, I just need to add a few things at the end. So um, what do you think that will happen next? Now that the, obviously the book's successfully. Yeah, funded. um, Will you do an exhibition? Uh, Will you be doing all the uh, book events and uh, Photo London, Paris Photo Fair, um, all of those kind of uh, events? Are you going to be getting involved in that? Um, what do you, where do you see it going? Or, uh, you know, do we see that there'll be furry merchandise? No, uh-huh. furry for merchandise. For example, do, do you see, where, where do you see it kind of going or will you just end it and start a new project? Well, uh, the, um, the, the book will, the book is due to, we, 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 it's being printed in Turkey um, by the same printer who did uh Cal Pesha book Lost in the Wilderness. Ah, that's um, a very good book. Indeed, yes. And um uh so the plan is to uh go to the press in uh next month. Uh and then and do you have from... to do you have to yourself travel over to Turkey? Yeah, yeah, do I'll you be there on... have to go and have a look at it and make sure things are. You yeah, have to press the final button, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be there on press. I mean, I'll send all the the PDFs, the final PDFs. Uh, I'm working with the designer, um, Roger Fawcett Tang of Structure Design. Uh, uh, he's going to be he's helping me obviously with the final PDFs, which we'll send over to the printer. And then when he's got it all set up, I'll be oh, well, I'll be there in Turkey and. I'll be there on press and, uh, and yeah, it'll be quite an important thing. You know, we've pre-sold, um, 200 copies of the book. It's going to have a 750 print run. Um, it's available. Uh, it'll be available through stay free publishing who are the 
the that's the imprint that I'm using. My basically my friend uh, Rob Clayton published a book called Estate um, uh, a couple of years ago uh, about an, uh, about a housing estate that he photographed in the 1990s, and um, uh, so he's got he's got his book on that. I put my book on his, and you know, sort of building a little publishing publishing empire <laughs> in South East London, and uh, uh, and yeah, so we're going to do probably do a few events, um, and uh, I'll be honest, I mean the the Kickstarter, the the crowdfunder is has been, uh, I it was possibly the hardest and most exhilarating thing, or the most exhilarating hardest thing I've done in my professional career. Um, and I thought it was going to be, I didn't, re I didn't really anticipate it would take as much out of me as it, as it actually has, because it's just been a very, you have 30 days and you're working it every day. Um, we had a brilliant start. Uh, we had a plateau and then we had a, a great end and, uh, it was wonderful, you know, really wonderful. I recommend it to anyone, but to do it well, you have to prepare. You have to prepare like you've never prepared in your life. <laughs> uh, and how long? How long was the uh, crowdfund on for, then, Tom? Because that's, a, that's an interesting thing that it, it, people are don't understand that actually you the amount of time it needs to take and the uh, the way that people are a little bit scared about keep asking online, asking to pledge money, asking to pay for something. We are backwards in coming forwards in that. And that's a good point you brought up where you had a strong start, you had a plateau, and then yeah. you had a hard finish. And that kind of sums it up. I think with most events that I've been involved in, you always look for a two-month lead-in where you start, start strong yeah. and you just keep nudging people along. And then a strong finish, you know, maybe the final fortnight and you've got a strong finish in, into the uh, into the finishing line. And, you know, did you find that you were a little bit conscious of um, nudging people and asking people to uh, uh, back your book it, it, well, as a consequence? Yeah. I mean, you've it's a real it's a real it's a real balance. It's a balancing act to do it to do it successfully i mean i'm talking from the, the the one experience i've done it i mean i was always been a very big um i've always been a very big uh champion of crowdfunding <laughs> but that was before i actually did one <laughs> um now uh it, you do it's about uh always keeping it light so but the tone of the book the tone of the project is light you know it's I'm not making some grand sweeping statement about who the furries are. Um, I'm, it's my, it's just my opinion. It's a story I wanted to tell with the, the work. Um, so likewise, there's no, there's no reason why the social media shouldn't be any different or the way that I'm promoting it. It's, um, you are, and you, but you're saying it in a way, which is just, you're on it all the time and you're just sort of, nudging people in a way you're not saying buy my book but the, 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 the. no one no, nobody wants to hear that you know um but we just got a really we got some great publicity as well and that's really important uh Cos cosmo us did an interview with me on their website uh time out did an interview with me on the website and then um uh patches O'Fur, who runs a furry news blog called dog patch press did a quite big piece for me uh, on the project, an interview with me, and also thoughts from furries who back the project or what they thought about the project. It was quite key, and so in the last week, I mean, it's a thirty-day campaign. Uh, we were, I think, twenty percent funded after the first day. Uh, we had we were sixty-five percent funded with one week to go, um, and we hit the target twenty-four hours before the deadline, which. Um, you can know, can it, I just take yeah. you back to the, uh, the the publicity side of it, Tom? Yeah. That's really interesting. How did you nail down those interviews with, like, Cosmo and so on? How did those come about? Did you push for them yourself? Were they through contacts? Had people seen the stuff maybe that you've been putting online and, and come into you that way? Uh, I, I put together, like, a... 
I put together a sort of a document, like a, just an introduction to the to the work with some photos that I've been emailing to a lot of different people, uh, picture editors, um, magazines, newspapers, to see if they'd be interested in doing an article. Um, and I, for the Cosmo one, I put it on a picture editors forum on Facebook um, in the States. And on the back of that, the photo director at Cosmo emailed me direct asked if I would be interested. I was like, yeah, of course. Time out. Um, I was working at the picture on the picture desk and I happened to mention, I mentioned it to the current picture editor um, and she said, oh, we'll try, get in touch with the editor. So I did the same thing with the editor. I didn't like go and see her when I was there because that might have been a bit awkward. Uh, I just sent her an email, uh, the London editor and, um, and she, one of her features editors got back to me and said, yeah, let's do it, you know. And um, the Dog Patch Press, Patches O Fur, has been a great support of the project. And I asked him if he'd... That was like halfway through, we were in Plateau, and I was getting a bit worried. And uh, he, he said, yeah, send me the information and we'll do something. And both articles both articles came out. The Time Out and the uh, Patches O Fur came out uh, the Thursday before the bank holiday. Um because we finished on uh, April 5th. So we had the kind of like April, uh, you know, Easter uh, bank holiday uh, right in the middle of the campaign. And then it was just after that, it was just social media. Just people were like, come on, we've got to get him over the line. And it was great. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. But yeah, that's how you do it. You just put together a document. So like if you're pitching a story to a, a publication or a pitch editor or, or whoever, you know, just put together a really simple document. Um, it can just be like a few lines in an email, a few pi- add a few pictures into it, and maybe just an outline of a Word document, a bit more information, and just bash it off and then, you know, see what happens. Um, but on top of that, it's also about you contacting people you know, people that you've maybe met, met once or twice, people you've heard of, you know, everyone, you know. <laughs> Trying to engage with people on Twitter, you know, and just just on it. It's a full time job. I have to warn you. If you do, anyone does it, if anyone does a Kickstarter or a crowdfunder, there's loads of other platforms. Um, if it's a thirty day campaign, it's full time. I mean, you're there, just just on it. Solid, solid. It's just it's relentless, and you're doing it, doing it, doing it. And when you think, if you start to feel a bit ashamed, you know, I'm asking for money. You know, it's a, just, just, just push that right down. <laughs> just stop thinking about that. That's very negative. Just push that bad feeling away and just keep going and 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 you'll get to the end and you'll be like very happy. Uh, and I've little seen little this happen quite often actually <laughs> with people. Where they, they actually have, uh, they're trying to raise some, some money as well. And it's, it, it is that British, thing of mm. not asking uh yeah. you know and being a little bit backwards in coming forwards and, uh, and the rest of it i think that there is actually uh a, an, an issue that we we have with asking for money also that goes hand in hand with how social media actually works people come in and out of it all the time so you might actually think that you're bombarding the world but in actual yeah. fact People are coming in and out of it, and they might not have seen the thing that you put up five hours earlier, or never will. Exactly. And exactly. it's a case of you putting it up again. Now, it's always the person that is the one who is constantly on social media who will pull you up and go, "You're always posting," and you're like, "Well, you're always on social media. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, you're you're, yeah. you're the one picking everything up." You know, so it, 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 it is a fine line. It's interesting your take on it, though. I I, I think that that's so important for especially new photographers, student photographers and, and people wanting to get their projects off the ground. Uh, I think that that's, that's really excellent advice, Tom. So, um, wow, we've, we've, we've literally, uh, we're, we're up to a good amount of time. Yeah. I was just going to ask, uh, if people are viewing and watching, if you've got any more questions for Tom, do, please do stick them in the comments box underneath, be quick, get them out very quickly uh, we haven't got much much longer, uh, and uh, we'll ask them for you straight away. And I hope that Tom can um, give you plenty of advice. Hi, Ben Pruchney. Uh, oh. Hi, Richard Golding. How are you? 
good to see you guys on here. Hope you're all doing really well. Um, uh, uh, right, so let's let's go another route now with uh, your um, your love of photography. Okay, mm. so how do you get your inspiration mainly? Uh, where are you searching? Where are you looking? Do you go to events? Do you watch stuff? Do you read things? How do you approach it? Instagram. <laughs> no, no, it's not just Instagram. I just said that um, <laughs> uh, on a, on account of your uh, your the uh, questioner. No, um, I do look on Instagram a lot actually. Um, but going to events is so important, and exhibitions as well. Um, um, I'm going to think of something that I've seen recently, um, which I can't. So sorry. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, exhibitions, uh, talks, and uh, oh, a good exhibition I saw recently was the Sony Photo Prize. A, qu- a few photographers that I know fairly well have, have won those prizes. Alice Tomlinson won the overall with a Story X photo, and uh, Tom Oldham uh, did this great series on uh, called yeah. The Pruners. And he won the portrait prize on that. And um, uh, so, uh, yeah, so ex- exhibitions are good. Um, yeah, Travis Hodges on recently, and up until fairly recently, he was doing these talks, uh, photo forum. They're still going. He's just not doing them. Um, they're good. Like every Tuesday, uh, I think it's the second Tuesday of the month, uh, they're really good to do. Um, I'm a member of Photo Fusion. Um, that's really worth it. It's like fifty pounds a year or something. Uh, they do a lot of talks and uh, events. Um, uh, so, do yeah. you find that actually going to the talks and the events to interact with other photographers is a huge benefit for you? Oh yeah, without a doubt. I mean, there's quite a few photographers who like moan about the good old days of going to a lab with your film and talking to people and that personally can't think of anything worse. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I don't mean to be disingenuous. I don't mean to be dumb, but it's because, um, I switched to digital in 2006 or something. And it was like film. So what? Sorry. What? <laughs> Fit? Why? Why? Why would, you, what, why would you do that for? They talk about it like, Oh, you know, it's, Oh, it's the best way. Oh, best way. Shoot. I had a conversation, two photographers, two, well-known portrait photographers and they said uh when they saw the first few pictures i shot oh yeah you must shoot it on film tom you must shoot it on film no no <laughs> no <laughs> no forget it done i'm done i'm done with film I, I work as an editor as well so i don't need to like print out a picture i can just do it on screen it yeah. just works it, whatever works for the person really and i don't want to be me <laughs> not being I think it's whatever works, you know, certain, I've got, you know, I've got a lot of books here, you know, by people who shoot on film and that's not my issue. I mean, whatever works, it's a tool, end of story, you know, it doesn't matter really. It's, it's actually a material. As I get older, I just couldn't really care less, you know, what, how a picture's shot, if it's lit, if it's, does it tell a story? What is the story about? Anyway, sorry, I went on a tangent, but yeah, I mean, I'm interested. No, in, that's good. I'm interested. No, that's, in, that's, that's a hugely good point because there's a lot of people out there who can be very precious about that kind of stuff. A lot of photographers. I personally, I like a bit of both, yeah, a bit of everything, I mean, and that's great. And you might be just a film guy who likes to shoot film all the time. You might be a a, a crazy digital guy who wants to be <laughs> digital all the time. Guy. Digital no, guy. It doesn't matter. You know, it's just so boring. It's so boring. Yeah. This is like, yeah. it used to be of interest to, to me. I mean, it's important when you're making a decision about what you're going to buy. Cool. Of course it is. But in terms of the work, it's about the work. It's not about yeah. what you shot it on. I mean, does you it You can pick up story? any camera, couldn't you, you, and do it. You can pick up your phone. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing. Yeah. I mean, people getting obsessed with the, like, oh, it's got to be this, it's got to be that. It, no, it's what what works, you know, what what tells the story. And, and then when you've got photographers who are matching, who are really thinking about it, who are thinking about, um, you know, does this work, 
does this work for me? You know, does this work for me? Does it work for the project? And then when it does work for the project and it works for the photographer, it comes out in the work. You know, it just work. Mm. It's just like Mark, Mark Wilson's pictures. I don't care how he shoots them. Do they work? It, the fact that he does shoot them on film, it has a resonance, you know, it has an archival quality. It works for the project. It's perfect. That's of interest. But <laughs> don't get obsessed about equipment. It's just, you know, it fulfills. I think that got... that's, a, that's a very good tip because it's a question that's always asked, especially by the new and younger yeah. photographers. Like I was saying, I think this it, talk, it, yeah, I was... it depends who they ask as well. Don't forget, because the person that they ask could be a bit of a could be a bit of a knobhead about it and go, "No, you yeah. must shoot it this way." Oh, and yeah. um, it, 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 and we've all we've all been there, haven't we? We've all oh, seen no, these people. Doubt. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's got a place, of course. It has the technical aspect is important. You've got to, you've got to know what you're doing. No, I'm not saying you that, but it's let's just start it back a bit. You know, it's just. Yeah. It's not, it's not yeah, 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 yeah. Really. So, uh, Tom, I've got one final question for mm. you. And yes. I was just wondering, who is your? What is your um, spirit furry animal? Oh, spirit fur. Well, oh, it's a bear. It's actually a purple moon bear. Um, I've got this uh, purple suit uh, that I wore wore at some some events uh it's an oswald botang uh three you know proper like you know uh three quarter length jacket really nice and uh but i'm a bear as well so yeah that's me i don't have a <laughs> don't have a suit don't don't have a suit though and the interesting thing is about the furries is is uh, i made this last point about them is uh only 25 percent of the furries actually wear an outfit uh, a costume you know, you don't have to have. This is what's what makes the furries unique within sort of cosplay is, is as a subculture, you, you don't even need to wear, dress up as an animal to be a furry. You can be a. Uh, for all I know, Richard's a furry. Um, <laughs> um, he just doesn't know yet. That's quite often the case. But yeah, most most people don't suit up. They they draw. They um, they're just friends with. You know, they just get together. It's like a social event. Um, and of some suit up, some make costumes for a living. Uh, it's the definition of what a furry is. Is uh, you know the the obviously interested in the anthropomorphization of, uh, of 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 animals. You know, sort of cartoon characters walking and talking, dressing like humans. That's essentially what a furry is. But the def that's the definition. But the kind of the the wider sort of who the furries are. It could be could be anyone you know and uh it's just a yeah. sort of a love of that scene really more than anything so yeah purple moon bear purple moon bear yeah and i can also okay, tell you so as well that you can pre-order the book on uh stay free uk. well i'll tell you what would be really handy if you could put that link in a comment underneath the video um, and uh okay. i will promote that Definitely. And, uh, yeah, that's really helpful because I, it, I'd forgotten to ask you that. Obviously, now that the Kickstarter is over, where do you go get it? So yeah, that's, that's, really, that's really helpful. And also, when the book has entered us, we will do a catch-up, yeah? Nice. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, we'll do a catch-up. You know, we like to keep in touch with, with all you guys. So, look, thanks ever so much for, for – uh, taking part against Tom and oh, uh, no it's been really, <laughs> yeah, it's really helpful. We had the odd uh, technical uh, error, but that's not a big deal. And, uh, you know, it's been hugely, it, it, it's been very good for tips I've found and actually stating that, you know, you don't have to do things, the, 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 uh, the party line, the, t the dictated line all the time. It's refreshing to hear that. So that's really okay. cool. No doubt I'm going to catch up with you at, I don't know, Photo London or one of yeah. the photo exhibitions at some point. But, yeah, we'll, we'll end the broadcast now. Thanks ever so much for okay. if you've taken part in this and you've commented underneath and asked questions. It's really, that's really great. We like to take part with the community. So, yeah, thanks ever so much again, Tom. 
going to end the broadcast. And uh, yeah, catch up with you all soon. Bye. All right. Cheers, Anne.